Now let's look at how our Parma ham should be handled. First of all, we remove the protective wrapping. Then we remove the grease that has formed all over the surface. Now we're going to trim our ham. That is to say, we're going to eliminate, where necessary, certain parts of the surface, such as a very thin white patina on the surface of the meat, or certain parts of the fat that have become rancid and yellowish. We don't use any products such as vinegar to clean our ham. After trimming our ham, we're now going to eliminate part of the rind. But be careful, the rind helps protect the ham. So never remove all of it, but only the part you're about to slice. Under the rind, we find fat. When cutting away the rind, we never remove all the fat. We always leave a layer like this, because it's the fat that gives Parma ham its classic sweet and fragrant flavor. Apart from anything else, it must be added that the fat on Parma ham consists of almost 70% unsaturated fatty acids and is therefore characterized by a modest cholesterol content. Now that the ham has been trimmed and the rind has been cut away, we can begin to slice it. There are three fundamental rules when slicing Parma ham. Rule number one, never, repeat, never slice ham with the rind on. Always remove the rind from the part you are going to slice. Rule number two, only slice ham when asked by a customer and avoid exposing it to the air for too long. Preparing slices beforehand and leaving them in the refrigerated counter display until they are sold is absolutely wrong. The slices dry out, they change color, the ham becomes salty and the taste is ruined. Parma ham is more delicate than other hams because it contains neither preservatives nor colouring and so it has to be handled with greater care. Rule number three, the slices must be thin, as thin as possible. To slice deboned Parma ham, a slicing machine is used, precisely because it produces very thin slices. This can be manual or electric. For ham, it is best to use a slicing machine that has a vertical blade with a minimum diameter of 30 centimeters. Okay, now we position our ham on the slicing machine and adjust the thickness of the cut to obtain an optimal slice. You see this slice? It's thin, with a pleasing layer of white fat. Observe the color of the slice, red, tending to pink. This is the characteristic color of Parma ham, different from that of other hams, because it's a natural color. Given that Parma ham has no colorings, nitrates, or other additives, if the slice contains defects, such as a small blood-colored mark or yellow fat, we must eliminate these imperfections directly from the ham so that the next slices will be perfect. If instead we find in the slice a small white chalky spot, this is not a defect, it's tyrosine an amino acid from the proteins that crystallizes during maturation and whose presence is typical in hams that have been matured for a long time. The slices are laid on a sheet of food grade paper, not one on top of another, but partially overlapping in this way. To avoid them sticking to one another, it's a good idea to interleave the layers. The ham should be cut right up to the shank, more or less at this level, after which it becomes practically impossible to produce nice thin slices. Nevertheless, the final part of the shank is still usable. We can prepare some thick slices to be diced or julienne cut for cooking with. Then the very last part can be used to prepare a fine stock. Hand cutting is generally reserved for on the bone ham. For instance, it may be suitable when we serve Parma ham with aperitifs. We need a ham clamp and a long, thin knife. We begin by eliminating the smearing, that is, the layer of fat that protects the exposed surface of the ham. 
Then we cut away the rind. Unlike the procedure for deboned ham, where we start from the base in hand, cutting, we start from the side of the ham. We try to produce thin slices with their layer of fat, because it's the fat that gives Parma ham its classic, sweet taste. We carry on in the same way, with regular parallel cuts, until we reach the bone. On reaching it, we turn the ham and carry on in the same way on the other side. 